Okay, so I just remade the supercell. Let me uh, slide my camera in here. Yeah, sorry about that. Buckle down. And bring it right to here and bring focus. First, um, I actually decided to do this quickly because you actually have to glue the edges of the supercell to keep the liquid, which is basically half a drop, less than half a drop, it's only a few microns thin, uh, glue it to keep it from evaporating. But if you're going to do a few hour demo, a demonstration like I'm going to do in not even a few hours, then uh, just simply taping the edges on three corners is enough. That way you could uh, do, you know, 99% of the laborious process, which is gluing it and waiting for the glue to dry, even if you use the UV curing glue, that's a problem. So let's actually drop, let's zoom in here after I drop this uh, ring magnet. I'm going to keep moving it. I know you want me to hold it still. There's been the request in the past, but if I hold it still, the ring magnets actually burn an image in, but I mean, that just means I have to remake the uh, supercell. And here you can actually see the conjugate geometry of force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Here, see the little black dot right here? If I actually get the camera at a steeper viewing angle, you can actually see it looks like a holographic BB floating actually above the glass. Also, too, one of the great things of actually having one of these in your hand, I'm going to place the the uh, ring magnet underneath the supercell now, as you actually see the holographic depth in person, which is approximately five, in five inches in appearance, which you actually can't capture that on. I'm actually just dropping this slowly over top of the uh, ring magnet. And let's zoom in a little bit and hit focus. Here you can actually see it. The interesting thing about a ring magnet is that the uh, the actual shape, the geometry of the magnet is identical to the geometry of the magnetic field. Now, when we actually say magnetism, we're actually not saying anything different than force and motion, which is no different than saying create space. Space has absolutely no properties. That's a quote unquote from Nikola Tesla. To say space is to say magnetism. 100% of the visible universe only has volume due to magnetism and magnetism only. Here we can actually see the broken geometry of the ring magnet, and everything is field pressure mediation. Everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. And here, of course, we're looking at the broken ring magnets. And here you can actually see it's an interesting swirl pattern. Here you see this S curve right here. This is the magnetic field trying to mediate out the pressures of the broken toroidal ring magnet at, as best it can. As best it can, the same mediate out pressures is no different than saying when you pour water on a hill, water is going to flow downhill. It's really no com more complex than that. When people tell me to uh, make things a little bit more simple or to dumb it down, I don't think you could dumb it down any more simple than that than actually saying that uh, water flows downhill when we talk about pressure mediation. Here we actually have another broken ring magnet, a little bit thicker. I've actually placed them in. Uh, a little fight with each other, so you can actually see the interesting. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. I'm already zoomed in all the way. Let me actually scoot it over here and rotate it around. I'm going to rotate this around. Like I said, the only reason I don't leave it sitting there for a while is because it'll burn a spot in the, uh, not literally burn, but it's like burning in an image on your television set. It'll burn in an image on the feral cell, so I'd have to rebuild it even quicker than I would uh, plan to, but since I've only got the supercell taped together here, then, you know, I was planning on taking it apart anyway. And you can see. Now let's actually take a really powerful magnet. This one's an N55 Gauss Neo Demi Meyer Boron, not this one, but the one I'm about to place on here. Let's first actually place this one underneath the supercell. You get an interesting view. I think that's lovely. Let's actually slide this up here. What you're actually seeing, too, by the way, everywhere you see light is magnetism. Everywhere you see the black, like this is the point of dielectric acceleration towards towards the null point in counter space, i.e. the plane of inertia. What we're looking at is the fight between uh, constructive and destructive interference between the conjugate geometry that defines 100% of the universe, which is dielectricity and magnetism. Magnetism is a dielectricity in loss of its energy or potential. If we want to dumb it down really simple, the dielectricity would be the three pound softball sized lump of plutonium as far as dielectricity. It's seemingly harmless. I mean, if someone didn't know it was radioactive plutonium, they're like, well, this is a harmless lump of metal. And magnetism would be, of course, the release of that pure potential 
the actualization of same at a given rate, which is 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, i.e. magnetism is the nuclear blast. Human beings in their ignorance have always confused the energy with the loss of energy. When actually human beings see, of course, an atomic explosion, we think, wow, power and energy. But that, of course, is the dissipation or the impotency, the release of power and energy. The complete inverse of what Mother Nature knows it to be. Mother Nature considers... The, uh, in the case of our uh, plutonium ball analogy, Mother Nature considers true energy to be that uh, seemingly inert softball size uh, lump of uh, plutonium, or in this case fissionable uranium. Here we actually have an N55 gauss, a really powerful... Um, uh, this is actually... No, it's not nickel plate. This one's uh, anodized, neodymium iron boron N55 gauss. Let's actually place it here edge on on the uh, supercell. Let's actually zoom out a little bit. Here you can actually see this, by the way, and I'm going to stop it from rolling because it's going to want to roll one way or the other. Here we can actually see the conjugate geometry of force in motion or inertia and acceleration. Here we're actually looking at the images on either side, like an owl's face. Everybody says this looks like a face of an owl. And if you actually look in really close, you can actually almost see a bowl-shaped formation. It actually does look like a bowl-shaped formation of uh, increasing inertia and acceleration. Some people say, well, that's kind of similar to the black hole analogy. And that's somewhat adequate. I mean, we're talking about something that has uh, increasing inertia and acceleration, but has actually no mass or magnitude. Mother Nature and the conjugate geometry of everything that defines nature, i.e. magnetism and dielectricity, and this hyperboloidal, uh, toroidal geometry, the conjugate geometry, the the, it's not dual, but it's a conjugate geometry. One defines the other, just as light defines illumination. I mean, inseparability of light and illumination. We talk about the extrinsic side of light being illumination. Here we're looking at, of course, magnetism, constructive, destructive interference between the magnetism and the dielectricity working, playing out their fight between each other in the field pressure mediation that defines their respective geometries, which in the case of dielectricity is the hyperboloid, and in the case of magnetism, is the toroid. Now here, when I bring it, I actually want you to take a look at this slight line right here. You can see it forming. This is a formation. This is really important. If anybody that's actually built a supercell, they never point this out. We actually see this forming. Now, this one is a really powerful magnet. It will very readily burn an image into the cell if I don't keep it moving. But here you can see this dark line of the torus or donut that defines the uh, magnetic uh, uh, toroid forming around this magnet. And of course, if I remove it away, you can still see the image burned in. This is what I'm talking about when I refer to burning in the image. Um, here, let's take a, put the magnet underneath. Here we go. Everywhere you see light is magnetism. We actually have nothing different than constructive, destructive uh, interference. Now, someone will say, well, this is a magnet. This should just have magnetism here. You know, we're looking at a magnetic field. No, damn it, we are not looking at simply the magnetic field. If you want to understand the secrets of nature, the absolute, and I mean this hardcore, undeniable, irrefutable, I don't care whether you agree with me or not, I'm 100% right. If you want to understand the nature of the universe, to think that this is simply magnet, and we have magnetism going around this, this is stupidity. Because we would have either simply light or darkness here underneath the supercell. No, what we actually have is the fight or interplay between the conjugate geometries of dielectricity and magnetism. This is no different than the dual slit experiment, which scientists are so, so stupidly ignorant thereof. We're looking at constructive destructive interference between magnetism and dielectricity, fighting out the pressure mediations of this manifestation and anti manifestation of the light. Here we have the centrifugal divergence of true magnetism. And right here, why is this black? We have light out here. Well, this is where dielectricity is. This is the point of increasing inertia and acceleration. Let's actually move this magnet away a little bit here. Here you can, uh, you see how quickly that really powerful magnet <laughs> burned in right here? Yeah, burns in pretty easy, doesn't it? I hope you like these videos. If you do, click the link below. You always drop a donation, which would be greatly appreciated. And here I'm going to put the, uh, the donut or the torus shaped magnet on top of the supercell again. Let me place it underneath it. People actually always seem to like that view a lot better. Let me place it right here. And let me place it so it's a dead center of the image of view. There we go. Of course, you're looking at it from an angle. You're looking at it at about a 45 degree angle. Let me bring focus here. There we go. Yeah, but that powerful magnet burned in really fast, oh, really good. Let me zoom out a little bit again and show you that, how quickly that ring formed.
the toroidal field where the actual ferrofluid and dissolution agent burned a nice little image in there. Anyway, I hope you like these videos. Um, I've got a lot more to talk about on magnetism, but uh, you have to understand the conjugate nature of geometry and dielectricity. We're not just looking at magnetism here. We're looking at constructive and destructive interference between the magnetic and the dielectric. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.